Finally. It's been so long, but we finally had a really good and exciting episode. Like, not all the episodes have been terrible, but I've been... If you've been watching these reactions, you you can tell that once they make it to Argus, it's been kind of a boring adventure from, from that point on. It's like, nothing really all that interesting or exciting has been happening, which is a shame, but now, we're finally back into the exciting things and exciting action that makes Ruby Ruby. So let's get into this episode. So this whole fight is a really fun example of using everyone's different abilities to some degree during this fight. And it's really smart and really clever. It feels like RT really sat down and thought, well, they've realized the mistakes of uh, everyone's complaints during the attack on Haven. How no one was using any of their semblances or weapons or anything really wisely. They weren't thinking about it. So now during this encounter, they really went out and thought about every scenario. Okay, how can these characters use their specific skill sets to help them during this fight? And it's really, really awesome. I want to kind of like deconstruct everything that goes on that makes this fight really well played out. Starting with, Jean is the one to come up with the plan. Jean is actually a very good tactician. It was shown even as far back from Volume 1 against the Deathstalker. He was the one who figured that whole plan out. And I don't think he realizes how smart he is when it comes to those kind of things. But yeah, it makes sense that he'd be the one to create a strategy. Because compared to Ruby, Ruby doesn't really have great plans. She has good moments. So I'm glad it was Jean who was the one who decided how to go about fighting Cordovan. I'm a little confused, because Maria continues to fly around her ship throughout the whole of this fight, and I thought Cordovan's initial warning attack had fucked it up to the point that they couldn't escape anymore. Because it seems like right now they could all just hop in the ship and then they could fly away from Cordo. I, I had the impression that the ship had been too badly damaged in the warning shot for that to happen. I don't, I don't know. I'm glad Oscar kind of removes himself from the situation, because he doesn't have a semblance yet, and his weapon doesn't really have dust infused in it, so it's, you can't do anything from a long distance. So he would have to be up close and personal with Gordo's robot, and it's also a blunt weapon, so it's not going to do a lot of damage to her metallic body anyway. I also really love, it's just, not only that, but like this, this whole volume has really played around with Crow's crow ability, his bird powers. Um, yeah, he had his like issues with drinking during the middle of it, but like even back on the um, train on Argus Limited, he would turn into his bird form and like use that to move around the battlefield in a really fast pace. And I'm, I'm glad they're thinking about it in a way that can be used in a combat situation. So I could gripe about how Ruby bases their entire attack strategy on video games, but A, that matches her personality a lot, and B, it's not unsound logic, I assume, and C, at least it's not like a Zelda villain where it's the big, great big glowing eye on the front of it, like your most damageable spot is the spot that you face to the enemy at all times. So it's not, and like thinking about batteries and like walkie talkies and whatever that like, need batteries, it is usually on the back. So it's not bad logic. It's actually pretty smart logic how they go about it. So they've used like 2D animation things in the show before, usually for like explosions or rocks or something like that. But the 2D water after Cordo's shot on Ruby and Weiss, it just it looks really out of place. Like I can tell it, it's not the same thing as the rest of the environment around them. <gasps> What's this? Ren is contributing to the fight in a major way, and he doesn't need Nora stapled to his side in order to do so? There's a whole can of worms about how RT writes Ren and Nora as one entity that I won't even go into right now, but it is really cool seeing Ren and Nora get themselves out of the background and onto the front lines and doing something really important, and not always having to be together in order to do so. If I had to have any minor complaints about this fight, it'd be, well, there are a couple of moments where, like, the animation looks a little janky. Uh, for example, Ren should have a shadow underneath him here, and Ruby's running animation on the missile here is a little weird. Even, like, Weiss jumping out of the, uh, out of the airship when the, she lands, like, why'd she have to do such high knees? But, like, it's a little bit weird, but, like, I was totally willing to look over and it wasn't that big of an issue. The only other thing is, they're comedy during the fight kind of undermines it. I, I can't take the combat seriously because they're not taking it seriously. This is an issue they've had before in Ruby, but for this fight, I, I understand making it a bit more 
bit more of brevity to it because the Blake and Adam fight that follows is very serious. And I, I understand not wanting to just load the viewer down on just non-stop stress feelings throughout the whole episode. Okay, uh, I, I enjoy seeing Blake and Adam fighting, but this beginning part, I don't know what it was. Maybe it's because how quickly the trees are moving behind them, or how fast they were moving, or maybe because how much the camera's wobbling and shaking around, but this beginning part of their fight is like really nauseating. It's not easy to watch, and it's, it, I just feel sick to my stomach every time I see it. This might be an out of place moment to mention this, but Blake is so fucking cute without her coat on. I wish she didn't have it this entire time. Like, I wish she made it to, like, she just never had the coat in the first place. I should, her tank top is so cute and looks so good with her outfit. Like, maybe the coat would be good for, like, whatever, whatever, they're an atlas and it's cold in winter, whatever, fine, okay. But I just, her outfit is so cute. Oh my god! Holy shit. I, I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect was gonna be underneath Adams' mask. I guess the thing that stands out the most is I didn't think his eyes were going to be blue. <laughs> no, but seriously, the scarring thing on him, I've been thinking about it a lot, and I, I don't get it. Because it looks like it has words on it, like, it, like, like it's supposed to say something. But because it's like the shaping around his eye, I can't tell what it's supposed to say. Maybe it's obvious to someone else. Maybe it's something they mentioned in his character short, but I, I just couldn't think about what it could be. Because I also can't read what it says. It looks like like an S and a, a zero, and then maybe a two or another zero. It's, just, it's hard to tell. 100 out of 10. So yeah, that, that's about it. I know I didn't really have a lot to say about the Blake, Adam, and Yang part of the episode, but uh, there, it's hard to comment on 1v1 fights other than going, that looks cool, because they're, like, you don't see the levels of strategy that there were involved with the first half of the episode. So there wasn't much for me to say, but I did really enjoy it. It's, it is a good episode, and I find the second half of it with Adam, Blake, and Yang to be the stronger part of it. But unfortunately, there's just less for me to <laughs> comment on, I guess. We are really close to the end. I don't think the kids are going to make it to Atlas this volume. That or it's going to be like at the very end, like how they made it to Haven at the very end of volume four. Uh, we only got a couple episodes left, and I'm really excited. Uh, it's been a really long time with some very boring episodes. And now we finally, we're done with the Argus arc. We're done with sitting around at Ark Home. We're done with setting up things going to happen. Now things are happening, and it's awesome. I wish something a little bit more would have been achieved in this episode, but it wasn't a bad episode. Alright, I'm super excited to see what happens next, and I guess if you like this video, go ahead and leave a... Do me a favor and leave a comment and like and subscribe. Uh, in the comments, tell me what did you think of this episode? Did Which section did you like better? Cordo versus Ruby or Adam versus Bumblebee? Uh, and yeah, I guess I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.